Hello guys, uh, my name is Vijay Kumar Vaka. I am working as Senior Solution Consultant in Episero. In this session, let us discuss about uh, something called as error mapping in Mule 4. So where we'll uh, have this error mapping? So we'll see this error mapping on the connectors uh, that are interacting with the external uh, systems. Say for example, here we have HTTP request. So you could see an option like error mapping here okay so this is where uh, so we, we are going to discuss about this right and let's say if, if I take FTP and if I drag the FTP right somewhere here also you'll see error mapping or let's take database and let's let's drag insert operation so he, here also you could see error mapping future now what this is all about so why we have to use uh, the error mapping uh, in our mule projects okay so in order to so the exact use of this error mapping is that to handle similar or same errors from several equal components in a different manner so what does this mean so let's take this example here we have server a i mean we are sending the request to server a and from this HTTP request, we are sending the request to server B. Let's assume that way. Now I have created, uh, I mean, I have deployed two applications with server A and server B, where this is the server A application. And you could see uh, the set payload value is response from server A. Okay. And I have created one more mule application with the name server B and the value that you could see in this set payload is response from server b so let's say um, i mean these are the two applications uh, to which we are sending the request by using this http request request to server a and request to server b now here in order to send this request right what i have done i have created the jar files for these two server a and server b and i have deployed them to the cloud hub so this is the server A and this is the server B mule applications. Now by utilizing this HTTP request operation, I'm, I have configured the URL here. You could see here, right? Uh, the path is server A here. Um, okay. Now to send the request to server B, I copied the domain URL that you'll get it. If you click this uh, uh, hyperlink, right? You'll, you'll get the domain here. So copy that and after that you have to add the path that is what i have added here so for server b application the path is server b and for server a application the path is server a so now let's try to deploy this uh, uh, okay this application is already deployed now let me clear the console and what i will do uh, let's go and send this request now there is no issue so basically this error mapping comes uh, it's a concept uh, within the error handling. So now that will only come into the picture only if we have any errors. Now let's first test the happy scenario. So in this mule application, I have created the HTTP listener to listen to the um, request from postman. So you, you could see here, right? Like HTTP colon double slash localhost colon 8081 slash error mapping, where the error mapping is the path. And if you see here, um, the port is 8081 and the host is localhost. So now if I go here, right, I have created a choice router here and I'll be sending the request to server A only if the payload.server value is equal to A. So here I have configured a very simple JSON payload uh, where we have one key value pair only. And if I send this value, uh, the server as A, what happens? Uh, based upon this evaluation on this one condition, it, it will either go to the request will be, uh, I mean, uh, the payload or the request will go to either server A or to the server B. So if, if the server is not equal to A, then the request will be sent to the server B. Right? Now, at last, what I'm doing, I'm printing the payload. That is nothing but the response from either of these two uh, servers now let me send uh, the request let's see the happy path first of all so server is a here now if i send this request 
we'll get some response like response from server a because this is what i have configured in this application right i have shown you server a and um, that is the payload that we get as a response from this http request and that's what we are printing here from this logger now if i change this to uh, something like any value other than a it will go to server b so if i send this request again to the same um, mule application this is in turn sending the request to server b because the server value is not a so yeah now you, you could see the response here response from server b so uh, these responses we are getting uh, because we deployed our applications in the cloud hub so these are the two applications i have deployed and if the server value is a the request is coming to this application and if the server value is b that is coming to this application and whatever the set payload we have used that value is returning back and that's what we are printing here and that is what is is being sent uh, as a response to the postman so this is all about the happy path we are good with the happy path now for example uh, let's say what i will do you know i'll make this uh, applications down i'll stop these applications okay so these will be undeployed stop yeah so now you could see that i have undeployed both the applications now now if i send the request to uh, yeah so if i send the request to server a right okay now what what will happen we'll get an error let's wait yeah see you got an error right http timeout error we got and what it is saying this is the error message you could see message element error type etc so because from this server i got http timeout issue so here we have two flow level error handlers okay so one is on error continue the other is also on error continue but here you could see that i have uh, I have uh, selected HTTP colon timeout error here. So because it's a timeout issue from this uh, server A, the the I mean this error handler has handled that error, and that is the reason you could see uh, there is an info. So what is uh, what I'm doing from this logger? I'm printing the error dot description. I'm logging the error dot description. So that is what you could see. This is the error dot description value. Now, for example, uh, if I get same error, right? Okay, let me let me remove this. Yeah. Now let me send the request to server B. So we know that we have made both the server A application, server B application down. Now, if I send this request to uh, server B, okay. Now again the response is same. It will it will throw a, a timeout error, and again it will simply log uh, based upon the logic whatever we have in this honor continue. So here we have only logger, and that is printing the error dot description. Okay, I did this. Uh, okay, let me remove this. Yeah, let me send the request one more time to the server B. Now the request comes, the payload comes here and the request will be initiated to the server B application. Now because that is also down, um, we are getting HTTP timeout error. And because of that, again, that is being handled by this particular on error continue, right? Because it, it is a flow level error handler. And you could, because we are logging the error here, also we could see the uh, the error dot description. So, so what what's happening here? That even whether it is a timeout issue from server A or timeout issue from server B, okay, we are only logging the error dot description. 
but what if you want some other uh, way of error handling for server b or for server a like uh, i mean to say here both we could get a similar issue from the first http request or from the second http request now if my requirement is to handle the error in a different way what i can do for that right so so that is the reason so i'll take one more on error continue i want to have different implementation for for that for the uh, let's say i i will also get a http timeout issue but i want to handle that in a different way now for that what we can do um, so go to the http request now go to the error mapping here click on the add new mapping now you have to select the http timeout issue right so select this timeout and what you can do you can have your own uh, namespace and uh, identifier so i'll keep the namespace as error and i'll keep the identifier as from underscore server underscore b now if i click here just click there now what we are doing with this error mapping we are actually overriding the http timeout error that is actually occurring from server b to error colon from underscore server b so i am overriding this uh, timeout issue to this error now though we get timeout issue on the server b what happens you know uh, it will be overridden as this error and this uh, i mean now it will it will look for when the error goes to this error handling part it looks for this particular error if there is any uh, error of this kind so now let's let's copy this and try to or you can also pick from here see error from server b so select that and that's it now inside this you can have your own implementation so what i will do you know i'll add logger once again i log it i log the error dot description oh sorry error dot description and apart from that including this right i want to send some email for example so you you add the email connector to your project and then use the send operation now here so configure the email smtp i mean you can have anything but uh, just to make uh, just to keep it simple right uh, i'll i'll go ahead with the configurations of uh, uh, this directly okay so i'll cop i'll i'll have my mail address here and uh, so two address i'll add it here like again it's it's my mail address so click on finish now let's put some subject for this okay so copy this now you see what i have kept server b is down please look into this issue as soon as possible okay so yeah okay now i am saving the application and it will be deployed automatically so clear the console now now let us send the request to server a first so it will simply log the error because it is on an, it is an on error continue we'll get the 200 okay response okay 200 okay and you could see uh, it only got logged here now for example if i send the request to server b we'll also get timeout issue again because this application is also up down right so let's wait but you see basically it's a timeout error but we have uh, did the error mapping on the server b go to error mapping and though it's a timeout er error it is uh, we have did error mapping just to distinguish between this error and this timeout error i mean the timeout error coming from server a and the timeout error coming from the server b 
So if it is a timeout error from server A, it's a timeout error only. Now if it is a timeout error from server B, it is error uh, we have mapped to error colon from underscore server underscore B. Now, now, yeah, so now that particular error type is matched from this uh, block. So that's why what will happen, uh, we also will see an email being sent to uh, the email uh, which I have pointed to. So this is my Gmail and you could see server B, server B is down. Please look into this issue as soon as possible. But if I send the request to server A, right, we are not, so we are just only logging that error, right? So that is the difference. So for the same error, from the similar uh, uh, rec operations, I mean, you can handle the similar error in a different way if your use case demands that, right? So it is here it is HTTP timeout only because we did not do the error mapping here. If I, oh, if I show you this, right, go to error mapping here, we have nothing. But on, the, on this particular HTTP request, we have something like error mapping. And again, it is for HTTP timeout. So and so when we send the request to server B, that is why uh, we could see it as a, a different, I mean, with this one, error colon from underscore server underscore B, that is how we are going to see the error type. We'll, we'll get the logs, yeah. See, error colon from underscore server underscore B. Now at this point, I'm also, so if you see this, uh, I'm also logging the error dot description along with that, so that I could see here error dot description along with that I'm also sending an email with this subject. So that that is why you could see you'll see one more email here 319 and 321 p.m. Okay. Yeah. So this is all about uh, error mapping in mule 4 and you can also do that error mapping as I as I as I told you right that we will have this error mapping feature on the operations where they'll interact with the external uh, what do you say? entities or systems or servers whatever okay so i hope you understood something out of this session and yeah you can you can also go through this uh, documentation ex example i'll share the link uh, for you in the description of this video thank you so much